The movie begins telling us about a rising wave of crime sweeping across the city of Columbus, with shootings, muggings and murders up to unprecedented levels. While people are dying left and right, the governor, John Messerf, maintains his stance that crime is at an all-time low. When questioned by protesters about a proposed pipeline, Messer promises that he has commissioned an independent study of the pipeline. Watching the governor's address is Abby Hill along with her family, who are thrilled that the governor is referencing the work that her mother Vivian is doing. Vivian heads to the airport to pick up her husband Stan who is returning from a job interview in California. Stan is excited about his job trip and is looking forward to managing a factory in the city. The two get to the car park still caught up in their convo when they realize that one of their tires is flat. Stan is about to change it when a man comes up to them, asking for money to help with his ticket. Stan politely declines, but suddenly another man attacks him with a pipe knocking him down. The first man then grabs Vivian and brutally stabs her before they take her purse and escape. Stan wakes up right after and crawls over to Vivian, holding her lifeless body in his arms and crying. Stan heads to the police station soon after to give a report, but the cops could seem to care less about the crime. One detective insinuates that the large cut on his forehead could have impaired his vision making it difficult to ID a suspect and the other comes in asking Stan about the state of his marriage before the alleged attack, leaving Stan confused as to how the question is even relevant. Stan says his tearful goodbyes to Vivian at her funeral service, but before the service can begin, Stan decides to leave, as he only came for Vivian. Stan sees the governor on the news addressing the slaying of Vivian, but he just gives a general response before having to go back to his business. Stan is pissed, he picks up Vivian's Bible and throws it, but sees that it opened to a specific page. When he picks it up, he sees the Bible verse, I am full of the wrath of the Lord and I cannot hold it in. Abby calls Stan to check up on him, but Stan claims he is fine, telling her to get some rest. Stan gets called to the police station to identify the suspect in his wife's slaying, and spots the man that initially asked them for money. Stan is adamant that he has found the suspect, but the detectives begin to question his decision. Stan is sure, and is expecting the cops to start working on bringing him justice, but soon after, he sees the same man walk free from the station with not even a slap on the wrist. The man then coldly winks at Stan as he walks past, leaving Stan furious. Stan confronts the detectives, but they tell him to wait on time, and maybe eventually old age will catch up to him. Stan storms out in anger, and the two detectives, Gibson and Walker, mention how the suspect is a part of a gang led by a man called Lemmy K and note how they will let the case simply die out. Later, Abby meets with Stan at a diner where he tells her about the suspect and how he walked free. Abby invites Stan over to spend the night with their family but Stan declines, wanting to spend some time alone. That night, Stan tries to drown his pain with alcohol. After a drink, he heads to the closet, remembering a life he put down a long time ago for Vivian, but chooses to leave instead of acting on it. Stan instead goes for a drive through the city, and heads back to the same parking lot where the attack took place but sees no one there. He is driving back when he spots his wife's killer with two other men and races back home. He smashes the drywall behind his closet and pulls out a large black box containing weapons and fake identities. He contacts his old friend Dennis, an ex-special forces, and requests some information on the men who attacked his wife. Stan goes by Dennis's building where he runs a barbershop as a front for his black ops business. It is revealed that Stan is an ex-Special Forces operative who worked alongside Dennis, who is still mad but understands that Stan left the ops because he found love. Dennis warns Stan to give up on his mission for vengeance, but Stan declares he wants justice, as they killed Vivian for no reason. Seeing his determination, Dennis hands over a file with some information on the men, along with his wife's killer whose name is Charlie. Stan takes the info and sets out, setting his sights on his first target, a black male named Nathan he remembers from the attack. Stan gets to the bar where Nathan is said to hang out and spots him playing pool. Nathan is chatting up a girl trying to impress her, then to Stan's shock he pulls out Vivian's purse, offering it to the girl as a gift. Nathan then spots Stan at the bar, but when he remembers the face, he takes off running. The two exchange gunfire before Nathan disappears in the dark. Stan goes looking for him, and when Nathan tries to ambush him, Stan easily disarms him. Stan demands to know where Charlie is, busting Nathan's mouth with his gun. Nathan mentions that Vivian's attack was more than a robbery then Dennis turns up, telling Stan that the cops are on their way, and when Nathan tries going for his gun both men shoot him dead. Both men run his pockets before dumping him in the trash and setting him on fire. Unaware that a man nearby has videotaped the entire incident, the two get food afterwards, where Dennis scolds Stan for going into this without an actual plan and could find himself killed before he takes his revenge. Stan insists that he can do this by himself and Dennis doesn't need to get involved. But Dennis reveals that the second he heard about Vivian he was involved and was waiting for Stan to contact him. 
Stan finds a cell phone in Nathan's belongings which Dennis takes to run checks. At a local club, drug kingpin Lemmy K gets news about Nathan's death and the men looking for Charlie. The man shows Lemmy K the video of Stan and Dennis, who orders his men to hunt down their families and even their dogs, guess bro never watched John Wick. Stan and Abby meet up at the diner, where she plans to come by the house to move out Vivian's belongings. Stan heads back over to meet with Dennis who shows him a wide array of weapons and body armor for his upcoming crusade. Dennis wonders what Stan's plan is, noting that after he gets his vengeance, he could stir up some unwanted enemies. Dennis tries to convince Stan again to give up and leave the country, but Stan's mind is set. Dennis is able to pull a number from Nathan's phone which belongs to a tattoo artist named Lars, who runs a tattoo shop downtown and Stan calls the number to confirm. Gibson and Walker go to meet with Lemmy, who is pissed that the cops are not watching his back as he is paying them to do, and orders that they find the men responsible. Governor Messerv is in his limo, planning to lie to the people that the pipeline poses no threat, when he gets a call from Gibson wanting to talk. The two meet up in an alley where Gibson tells Messerv about Lemmy K losing his men and threatening to expose a video of the governor's son. It is revealed that Messerv works alongside Lemmy K to maintain power. Messerv orders Gibson to get things contained, and maybe he could become the next police chief. Meanwhile, Stan heads over to the tattoo shop pretending to want a tattoo but Lars isn't around. The tattoo artist there gets suspicious of all Stan's questions and secretly texts Lars, who tells him to keep Stan there. Dennis, who was supposed to meet up with Stan, gets an alarm at his barbershop and gets there to see the entire place trashed. Charlie reveals himself and holds Dennis at gunpoint while his other goons surround him with bats. Charlie shows Dennis a picture of him and Stan dumping Nathan and demands to know where Stan is, but Dennis sees a chance and disarms Charlie before brutally beating down the other men. Charlie manages to escape, and Dennis drags the other man to the basement. Stan is getting a tattoo done on his back when Lars comes by and decides to take over the tattoo. Stan plays it cool, claiming that his daughter really liked a fly tattoo he did for her friend but can't quite remember his name. Lars suddenly pulls a gun and tells Stan to stand, revealing an I am Wrath tattoo on his back. Stan disarms Lars and begins to beat his ass knocking him back. Lars tries using an antique sword, but Stan disarms him using a box cutter and demands to know where Charlie is. Before he can get an answer Lars offs himself on the blade. Stan instantly takes his cell before dragging his body behind the counter and grabbing a stash of drugs in a bag nearby. He contacts Dennis who tells him about the attack on his shop and the two meet up where they dispose of the bodies. Stan thinks the stash may belong to Charlie and plans to use it to draw him out and right into a trap. That night Stan cleans up and watches videos of his family before drinking himself to bed, where visions of Vivian plague his memory. The next day, Stan goes by the church that Vivian used to attend, praying to God for a sign to make him stop. The priest for the church comes to sit beside him and Stan wonders if Vivian paid for bad things he did in the past. Stan begins to pray, confessing that he has killed many men, some for reason and some for none. Meanwhile, Abby and her husband arrive at the house to collect Vivian's things where she sees a gun alongside the files of her mother's killers. She grabs the stuff and is heading out when Charlie and another man suddenly pull up and open fire on their van. Stan arrives soon after where it turns out Abby's husband is shot in the shoulder. Abby is mad at Stan for bringing this on them revealing that she saw his gun in his files. She is worried about her son thinking that they may be next, but Stan swears that he will not allow that to happen and wants them to get a hotel room. Stan's identity has been found out by Gibson from an FBI contact and he reveals to Messerv that Stan was former black ops. Hearing this, Messerv orders Gibson to bring in professionals and spare no costs as he wants this to go away. Charlie is sitting inside his car when he gets a text from Stan, telling him that he can get his missing stash if he meets alone at a Korean nightclub. Stan and Dennis gear up and head over to the club where they spot Charlie and text him to meet in the VIP room of the club. Charlie heads to the VIP where he spots a man with a bag staring at him and begins to get suspicious. The two men stare each other down before flashing guns at each other. Just then Stan walks in and seeing him, Charlie pulls his gun and fires, but Stan manages to return fire along with Dennis, and force Charlie to run for cover. Charlie begs for his life saying that killing Vivian was not his idea, telling Stan that Lemmy K ordered the hit because she was being too nosy. Just then some hitmen turn up at the club, so Stan shoots Charlie dead before the two shoot their way out of the club, killing a few men in the process. The two get back to their hideout where Dennis tells Stan about Lemmy K and how dangerous he is. Seeing that he killed Charlie, Dennis again tells Stan to leave but Stan wants to put an end to this completely. He heads back home and pulls out Vivian's research where he realizes that her inquiry into the pipeline had revealed an 82% water contamination, which would halt its production. Stan then figures out that Messerv had Vivian killed to cover up the review and to protect his pockets. 
Abby and her family are getting ready to leave the house when Lemmy K and his men burst in demanding that she call Stan. Abby sees an opportunity and stabs one man in the back but in the fight, her daughter gets shot in the stomach. Stan gets a text from Abby, but knows that something is wrong and immediately heads over to the house with his gun drawn. Stan sees them through the window but decides to break in through the basement and enter the house. He kills the first man before Lemmy grabs Abby and orders him to drop his gun. Stan complies, but from outside. Dennis shoots Lemmy disarming him and allowing Stan to get some punches in and knock him down. Outside, Dennis is ambushed by a gangster and shot, but manages to kill his attacker when he comes looking for him. Stan holds Lemmy at gunpoint, demanding to know if Messerv is involved, but Lemmy is suddenly shot dead by Gibson. Gibson thinks that he is Stan cornered, but Dennis shows up and knocks out Walker, forcing Gibson to stand down. The two force Gibson to drive, where Stan confronts him about coming after his family but releasing criminals. Gibson confesses that Lemmy was blackmailing the governor using an incriminating video of his son, forcing the police to keep Lemmy's men out of jail. As part of the deal, Lemmy agreed to do jobs for the governor, such as the hit on Vivian. Stan forces Gibson to drive him to the governor's compound and knocks him out. Gibson wakes up a little after handcuffed to the steering, and is shocked to see all the governor's guards dead. He realizes too late that his car is rigged to blow and it explodes killing him while Walker is barely able to escape the trunk. Stan shoots his way into the governor's mansion, but the governor ambushes and shoots him. The two get into a fist fight, where Messerv gets the upper hand and holds Stan at gunpoint. Stan confronts him about killing his wife, but Messerv states that sacrifices must be made for the greater good. Instead of shooting Stan, Messerv gets a little too close, allowing Stan to use a knife and stab him in the stomach. Before passing away, Messerv weakly asks who Stan is, and he replies saying I am Wrath. Soon cops flood the entire compound and surround the building with snipers having their sights on Stan. Having gotten his vengeance, Stan Coldy walks out before the cops. He raises his weapon and gets riddled with bullets, but it turns out he was wearing a bulletproof vest underneath his clothes. Three days later, Stan is in the hospital with Abby and her family visiting him. She learns from a lawyer that Stan will be sent directly to federal prison and due to his background they could possibly never hear from him again. Hearing this, Abby runs to her father one last time to say goodbye before she is asked to leave. A while later, there is a change of shift for the guards at Stan's door and it turns out to be Walker. He discreetly pulls his gun and enters Stan's room to finish the job and again, instead of shooting Stan right away, he begins his villain monologue. As he talks, Stan shoots him dead from under the covers using a gun that Abby gave to him earlier. Dennis turns up disguised as a doctor and hides Walker's body before throwing Stan a bag telling him to get dressed. Dennis then pushes Stan out of the hospital and the two plan to leave the country. A few weeks later, Abby receives a postcard from Stan in Brazil, assuring her that he is doing fine. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.